It's the last MasterChef semi-final. And just one challenge stands between these six exceptional cooks and their place in the finals. Am I really here? I've really got this far. To get that title, that's the one. That's the badge I want, MasterChef finalist. Can't quite believe it. It's just so close now. It's getting really scary. I'm really keyed up for this today. It's like the 100-meter final in the Olympics. You don't get a good start, you're in all sorts of trouble. I can guarantee they are going to fight tooth and nail to keep their place in the competition. Today is not a day for belt and braces. No, nope. today is a day for amazing food. Welcome back. Just one dish. Your dish separates you from a place in finals week. You have cooked for a restaurant critic before. Today, you are cooking for three. Tracy McLeod, Tom Parker Bowles, and Faye Mashler. Four plates in one hour and 15 minutes. At the end of this, one of you is going home. Let's cook. Today, they have to reach for the stars. Right now, good is not good enough. Exceptional is what we need. I'm trying to prove to John and Greg today that I understand from the feedback they've given me that I don't need to throw a hundred things at a plate of food. That actually really, really good food can be just a few ingredients done really, really well. So I'm doing a blackened sirloin with mushroom puree, Roscoff onions, a parsnip, and a dark beer sauce. Steak, no chips? You've got a parsnip chip. Why would you cook a steak? at this part of the competition. I think it's undervalued, you know. I love sirloin, I love steak. Mate, I'm, I'm with you all the way, but you know what? You either cook a steak very well or it's done and dusted. You are finished. Oh, you're scaring me. Steak and a beer sauce with mushrooms, that could be lovely. But who wants a parsnip with their steak? Do you ever go to a steakhouse and go, would you like a side, sir? Yeah, I'll have a parsnip. It doesn't happen, does it? does not happen. I'm slightly nervous about cooking for the restaurant critics today because I've done quite well in the last few rounds. So I've just got to work as hard as I can and continue that. Are you wheels up yet or are you winging it? Wheels have just got up and uh, it's a long way to go still. Do you feel like that today, David? Do you feel like there's a long way to go? I feel so. I mean, timings are OK at the minute, but. All of a sudden, you lose 10 minutes, and things are going to be a bit of a struggle. What are you cooking for us and the critics today? Cumin roast, duck breast, duck leg, pastilla, a pomegranate jus, and just some chicory just to offset the sweetness of the dish. Lots of big, bold flavours there. That's a bold person who puts sweet potato and pomegranate and duck together. They're all really sweet. I know David's got technical ability. He looks really rushed to me, John. He looks more under pressure today than I've ever seen. Time will tell. This competition has been tough. It's been grueling mentally, physically. To get this far means a lot to me, but to get even further would be brilliant. I'm making you Nurgisi koftas, which is Indian scotch egg with a masala sauce, which I'm going to serve separately. Okni palau, which is a spicy rice. I've never actually made these eggs. 
Um, but I love Scotch eggs. What are you hoping to demonstrate to those critics? That I can finesse Indian food and the flavours are there. I think a combination of finesse and your mastery with spicing, I think it could be fantastic. I hope so. I really hope so. Right now, I am worried. She has got to boil and shell quail eggs, wrap them in a spiced meat mixture, make a masala sauce, make a rice pilau, and make a chutney. And get it all onto four plates and into those critics within an hour and 15 minutes. I'm just saying it takes an hour and 10. Now I'm in is a cook with his own unique ideas. So unique, John, to be honest, I'm not even sure what it is he's doing right now. Now has got a blue swimmer crab. It's got the swimming leg, and he's doing that with tempura batter. Then we've got a claw, which is going to be dipping in salty duck egg. Then he's taken the head, and he's making a Chinese dumpling mixture, and then he's going to deep fry it. He's then making a curry sauce, which he's using the brown meat from the crab in to give it real depth, and he's serving the whole lot on rice. I've had lots of crabs in my life, but I've never seen anything like this. The name is like crab anatomy. Crab anatomy. Yeah. The anatomy of a crab. Exactly. Um, yeah, because I'm a medical doctor, so I have done a bit like di dissection of animals, including humans. Um, I want to show that I use the whole crab. How are you going to present this dish now, man? It's basically a board. So I'm going to say that the shell, that the crow, you know, like when you do the biology textbook, basically. Thirty minutes on your first course. I made a couple of mistakes in the last challenge. It's in the bottom three. Ultimately, if I've got to learn from it, do better. Just you know, get over the silly little mistakes. One great plate of food. What are you going to cook for us? All spice duck wrapped in chard with cream corn sauce with some sour cherries in the bottom and some wild mushrooms. So it's going to look very pretty and some lovely taste. This is such pressure, isn't it, Greg? It's like a tidal wave of pressure. Can't see it, but you can feel it on your shoulders, just like pushing you down. I really like the flavours that Greg's putting together. I think duck, chard, and basically two sauces could be a lovely, lovely tasting dish. My concern is one of the things I love about duck breast is crispy, salty skin. And Greg's taken it off. I think today the judges are expecting perfection. I've been doing nothing else in my life apart from practicing and cooking. I've put everything into it. I'm cooking some pan-seared scallops with a broad bean and mint puree, black pudding um, and a tarragon oil with some asparagus. Why would you have not done something more technically challenging? It seems quite like a simple dish, but it needs to be, like, spot on. So, um, like, the cooking of the scallops is essential. How do you say good luck in Portuguese? Boa sorte. Boa sorte. <laughs> This is a risky dish for Alex because Alex's got nowhere to hide. If a scallop's not cooked properly, you know. If the black pudding isn't crispy enough, you know. If the broad beans aren't shelled, you can see it and you can taste it. I'm just worried that I'm not going to get it out on time. You've only got five minutes, Alex. OK. Scallops aren't on yet. Well, people watch this programme and they go, those restaurant critics, they're so grumpy, they're so mean. But we are just like anyone who likes food. We want to eat something delicious. And if we don't get it, we do get a bit grumpy. Well, now we're at the final six. I'm hoping for fireworks on the plate. I'm hoping for ambition unleashed. 
What I really don't want to see is half-baked restaurant rip-offs. I want to see straightforward, honest, good, skilled cooking. One minute time left, but you're going to need more, aren't you? I reckon about three minutes. Come on, then. Push, push, push. Breathe, Alex. You can do this. You're fine. So Alex is cooking pan-seared scallops served with broad beans, a broad bean and mint puree, scallops. In one way, it's quite a safe thing to cook because as long as you cook them briefly enough, they're going to be tender. Scallops and black pudding. That's not the first time I've seen that on a menu. Come on, come on, come on. Just worry the tarragon might overwhelm. The tarragon can be a little bit of a bully. So I think she has to be very careful, Alex, to keep the tarragon under control. Is that the last bit? Yeah. You're five minutes over. Should we go? Go, 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 go. What well Alex. Hello. Hello. I'm really sorry about the wait. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today I've cooked for you some pan seared scallops with some black pudding, some broad bean and mint puree, and some tarragon oil and some crispy tarragon. I hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you. Ran out of time, um, and it's just like going into that room is just terrifying. It's one of those dishes that tastes exactly as it looks and as it read on the menu. If you like scallops and you like black pudding and you like broad beans, you cannot not like this dish. I think the seasoning of the scallops is very good. I mean, it's very competent. I really like that tarragon oil. Everything on the dish is well done, and there's no doubt Alex understands flavour. Does it have the wow factor? I don't really think it does. There is not a mistake on the plate. It's a perfectly cooked scallop and a lovely balance of flavours. But I'd want to see, at this stage, a little bit more ambition. Greg, did you lose track of time here? Because you've got just over three minutes. Yeah, I'll be, re I'll be ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Greg is cooking for us Swiss chard and allspice roulade of duck breast. Duck how you want it? Perfect with creamed corn and mushroom sauce. Pretty. I can't quite work out what this will actually be like. It's so random sounding that it's either going to be absolutely brilliant or awful. OK, last one. Quick, 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 quick. last one. Need to go now. So I've cooked you a roulade of duck with uh, allspice wrapped in chard. Uh, you've got some cream corn and a mushroom sauce. Hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, I'm on a different planet at the moment. I'm cooking for Michelin chefs and food critics. It's just like, <laughs> stop it. In a minute, I'm going to wake up, honestly. There's no spicing coming through, and the chard's rather watery, and the sweet corn's rather sweet. I quite like the sweet corn just for the texture and the sweetness of it. It bashes the hell out of the mushroom. You don't really taste the mushroom at all. It's just not balanced, is it? There's just a huge mound of creamed corn, and then you have these little lozenges of quite tender duck, but it just doesn't taste of anything because it's, it's not seasoned at all. There's nothing vibrant about this dish. The duck gets lost in the sweet corn. The duck itself is nicely cooked, but it has no skin. And it's wrapped in a charred leaf that is just a watery vegetable. Minera, you've got five minutes left. OK. You got time? Yes. How do you do it? Scotch eggs, which are normally snacky, picnic food or bar food, how do you elevate those to being the centrepiece of a really beautiful-looking dish? 
is this a little bit simple? A Scotch egg with chutney and sauce for the final six of MasterChef. Smells good, Manira. Thank you. Whoa! I know. I hope we'll be blown away by the beautiful spicing. Nice. Look at you. Oh. You are allowed to breathe. Until I've got these out, I don't think I can. Well done, Manira. I've made for you Indian scotch eggs, some spiced vegetable rice, a mint and onion chutney, and a masala sauce. Hope Thank you me. enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This is my sort of food. I love the texture of the kofta. Straight scotch egg, that masala sauce, that just sings of spice and chilli. People might say this is the last six of MasterChef and it should be more refined and more sort of chefy. I don't care. I think this tastes really, really good. I love this. I think it's great. I like the rice. I like the spicing of the meat and the sauce. Yeah, fabulous. It's unbelievably full tasting. And that sauce just brings everything together. It just turns what is sort of basically two separate ingredients into a dish. It's absolutely stunning. Those waves of flavour are hitting me, crashing onto my tongue, one after the other after the other. Love the balls with the egg yolk. She can cook, that lady. To make four plates of food with scotch eggs, I don't know what I was thinking. To achieve that, I'm really proud. Kenny, you're going to be late, aren't you? I might be just a couple. Come on, mate, quick, quick, let's go. Kenny is cooking blackened aged sirloin, Roscoff onion, mushroom puree, parsnips, truffle, and watercress garnish, and a dark beer sauce. It seems steadfast and solid, and something I want to eat. Kenny, you've got a minute left, I'm sorry to say. Dark beer sauce could come across brilliantly. Come on, Kenny. Never seen you shake so much, Kenny. Pressure's on, isn't it? So sorry. Well done, Kenny. Well done, well done. Let's go. Those parsnips are ridiculous. It's like the plate sprouted horns. OK, so here we have a, a blackened sirloin with Roscoff onion, parsnip, some mushroom puree, truffle and a beer sauce. Thank you. Looks great. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It feels like a half a dish, doesn't it? I'm mm. going to sit here until he brings some chips, basically. Yeah. <laughs> My hands are chopped to bits and burnt to smithereens, and uh, that was really hard. That was really hard. Can't fault the cooking here. You know, that's a really nice piece of beef, really well seasoned. The mushroom puree, really nice depth of flavour, silky. There's just this sort of not quite enough of anything. Everything is great. If you're sitting at home with someone cooked that, fantastic. Perhaps at this stage, again, a little bit limited in, in, in its ambition. This looks to me like the illustration of a diet. It's not that I like huge amounts of food, but it's kind of oddly disparate. He's cooked his steak nicely. I like his beer sauce, I like his puree. What I don't like is those parsnips. Do you know what that plate needs? Chips. Are you ready? Um, I'm going to plate up in one minute. Now a minute is cooking crab anatomy. What the hecky decky is that? Is the dissecting board. Just pork and prawn stuffed crab shell, crab claw coated with salted egg yolk, crab meat and creamy curry sauce served with Thai jasmine rice. Three minutes left. I will be absolutely on time, I think. I love this. I think this is, this is fantastic. Brilliant. 
Crab anatomy might be the single least appetizing two words I've ever seen on a menu. <laughs> Sounds like a sort of autopsy. Wow, look at that. This is quite incredible now, man. Go get them. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Ooh. Labels. Nowerman's made crab anatomy. Pork and prawn stuffed crab shell. Crab claw coated in salted egg yolk. Swimming leg tempura and crab meat in a curry sauce. Served with Thai jasmine rice. Well, I can honestly say this doesn't look like anything I've ever been served before. The presentation was certainly original. It, it was fun. I thought that crab curry was sort of delicate and quite silken. Mm. Nice chilli hit. This is a cook who knows his textures and his flavours. It's very good indeed. There's some seriously good flavours here. And we will remember it when all the other politer dishes have faded from our memory. We will remember this one. I think full marks for originality and a certain macabre quality. It looks fantastic. It's intriguing and it's delicious. And as all good crab dishes go, these are perfect combination of sweet crab meat and saltiness. We've got a serious, serious talent on my hands. And he's done all that in one hour and 15 minutes, Greg. I'm really happy. Oh, I just like give everything that I have and put my personality on the plate. So I hope they loved it. That is a lovely looking duck. Yeah, it's good. David is cooking for us cumin roast duck. My first thought is that this is going to be rather oversweet. Pastilla is sweet anyway. Then the sweet potato puree. Come on, David. Last little push, mate. In principle, I like all the things on that plate. I just don't know how they're going to work together. Off we go, off we go. What do we go? David's dish is cumin roast duck, a duck leg pastilla, a type of Moroccan meat pastry which he's flavoured with orange, sweet potato puree, chicory, and a spiced pomegranate jus. Yeah, I really admire all the people that are, that are in there, and they write fantastic reviews, so they really know what they're talking about, and I'm sure they'll find some errors, but hopefully they'll find some things that they like as well. The duck was very tough. I mean, it's really quite hard to cut. The thing that I like the best is, is the um, pastilla. Crisp pastry never goes amiss. Technically, there are no real problems with this. The, the duck fat's rendered, the skin is crisp. It shows technique and it's got good flavour, but somehow it just doesn't pull together. I think he's tried to do more than some of the other contestants today. You know, technically, just making that pastilla in itself is quite a feat. And the pomegranate jus. It's wonderful. It's sticky, it's sweet, but it's it, it, spicy as well. I don't like the look of the dish. I really don't. I do, however, like eating it. I mean, it's done a huge amount of work in an hour and 15 minutes. We've had some great food, we've got some great cooks, and we've got a decision to make, Mr Wallace. One of them is leaving the competition. I tell you what, we really put them under pressure today, and I think it showed. My dish of the day was now, I mean, I've never actually ever seen anything quite like it before. Uh, he's invented something completely new. He did an autopsy of a crab <laughs> and he served it to us in this most extraordinary and delicious manner. You know whose food the critics really did love, and that was Munira. Those Indian Scotch eggs on top of the rice with the curry sauce, they loved it. They woofed it down. I think she's guaranteed a place in the next round. Alex today stepped back from a Portuguese roots and gave us a scallop dish. 
she cooked her scallops really well and the flavours she put with it matched it brilliantly. What I ask you is this, is that enough ambition being shown on that dish for a place in the final five? Greg, I'm not really sure where he was coming from with this dish. The duck wrapped in chard, for me, lacked flavour. Greg's dish needed lots more seasoning, but what it really needed, it needed the skin of that duck. Because a duck dish gets flavour from the skin of a duck. I think right now Greg is skating on very, very thin ice. Kenny cooked us a nice piece of beef. I like the mushroom sauce that he made. That part of it is absolutely fine. But why did we have two chunks of sweet parsnips? You know, don't take a classic and try and change it. Give a classic. David left me unsure today. The duck was a little tough, and the presentation, it looked a little scruffy. However, his flavours are good. Time just disappears, and I know it's the same for everybody. You don't want to go home on making errors. We'll just wait off it. I'd love to be in the final. I've really put my heart and soul into it. It's going to be tough if I go, but I gave it my best shot. I feel absolutely relieved to be out of that kitchen. It's going to be a hard wait, but I hope I've done enough. I hope that dish gets me in the finals. If it doesn't, I've stumbled, haven't I, at the, at the last hurdle, but I've still had a fantastic competition. Thank you all for all the really interesting dishes. Some are extraordinary. Some with a few issues. The contestant leaving us. Is Greg. Okay. Bravo. Okay. Okay. Greg, fantastic competition. Thank you so much for all your hard work. <laughs> well done. Much. Very well That's done. Great competition. Thank Thanks very much, Greg. No regrets at all. From day one, it's been a dream. Took chances when I had to. Didn't play it safe. But I've loved it. I've loved it. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset, but I've loved it. You five are heading straight in to finals week. I do feel on top of the world at the minute. I'm just going to take the ball by the horns and give it my best. Oh, my God. What a feeling to be in this competition. It's just unreal. I'm just overwhelmed. I still don't know what I'm doing here, but it just feels really good. I can't believe I'm in the final five. I work so hard and I can't believe they love the food. I'm feeling fabulous. So my crab dish made me to be in the final week. So I'm going to do a crab dance today. Next time, it's the Master Chef Finals. <sighs> we need to go in the oven like now. This is about as different as you can get. And only one will be crowned MasterChef Champion 2018. That's made my heart thump fantastic. <laughs>